Hey everybody, welcome to Earth and Time, a channel that focuses on both human and Earth history, and specifically where those two things intersect. Today we're actually going to be talking a lot more about Earth history, and I'm actually in Southern California at a place called San Clemente State Park or State Beach here right along the coast, so you can see the Pacific Ocean behind me. So let's learn about these amazing deposits that were here that were once deposited in deep water environment that are now popping up on the shoreline. Let's get to it. So from this vantage point, we're actually sitting on top of a cliff and we're actually going to work our way down this pathway through all these rocks and talk a little bit about the geology here. But before we get too far in the geology, we need to talk about a couple basics of what's happening here in Southern California. The first of those basics are that most people have heard of the San Andreas Fault. It's a large strike slip fault system that comes through this area that's set up uh, here where it's at in its present location about 5 million years ago, but somewhere around 30 million years ago, the Pacific Plate was coming and running into the North American Plate. And then there were some what we call oblique motion associated with that, it created these uh, strike slip type faults. And we ended up having these basins and highs developed associated with that faulting. Now, at one time where I'm standing right now was actually a basin and the ocean came over and flooded into this area. And so when that happened, we got a lot of deposits here that were deep water deposits that now do again to the present day tectonics or more recent tectonics has popped up this whole area. So really interesting story and just really think about how dynamic the earth is. Uh, we're going to walk through these deposits. We'll talk a little bit about some of the observations, how we know they're deep water deposits here at San Clemente State Park. And then we'll sketch out a couple observations and we'll talk more about the structure and geologic history here. As I head down this trail towards the ocean, we're going down about 100 feet of section here. Uh, the youngest section on here is actually not related to that old ocean basin that was at this location but it has to do with when the ocean receded and you had more uh, conglomerates or uh, fan systems coming out that were dumping off the mountains into this basin. But what we're going to do is we're going to work through these younger deposits here. And as we go down section, just like if you think about layers of a cake, the top layer was put on last, right? If you think about multiple layers of cake, the stratigraphy here is the same. So the stuff up here is the youngest. And as I walk down, I'm actually getting older and older and going, if you will, back in time. Now, we're in the younger section here, and I want to point out there's some rounded cobbles and pebbles and gravels coming right through this area. There's actually mountains off to the east of us, and so those mountains were dumping this material down. And so when you see a lot of these rounded cobbles and pebbles, it tells us they've been transported some kind of distance because they've had enough time to go from kind of a classic squarish rock, if you just pull it right from the outcrop, to eventually get rounded. So it tells us there's probably some stream or water associated with moving these large cobbles. So there must have been some kind of topography for the water to run down. And so when these were occurring, the youngest stuff up here, this is when the sea level had receded and the sea level was probably somewhere out in that direction, maybe due to some of the latest glaciation or during some of the lower water levels or ocean levels because of the ice ages. These are all what we call terrestrial, so we're not in the marine environment yet. So the youngest stuff is terrestrial, deposit on land. But as I start getting down here, there's a distinct difference in what we see from stuff like all those beautiful cobbles up there and I come down here and I pan and suddenly it looks like I'm more or less at the seashore and you can see these really finer grained deposits than what we saw. Still fairly coarse. These are sands so I can get you up close so it looks a lot like the beach. But what's interesting is these actually weren't deposited on the beach. They were actually deposited out into what would have been deep water at this location. And we can actually see pictures of what these canyons look like in the deep water in present day bathymetry. And I'm gonna show that now. And as you can see, we actually have what we call the shelf. And then in the bathymetry, you can actually see where these channels had developed off the shelf. So rivers were dumping out into this area past the shelf, probably during the last ice age and carving these canyons out into the deep water. So we can get pretty coarse sediment and sands miles and miles off the coast because they get funneled and, and much like a river on the surface, there's so much force coming down these canyons from maybe flooding events or uh, landslides or failures going out into the deep water ocean that they can actually travel 
the sands can travel some distance. And that's actually what we're seeing results of in these cliffs around me. So there's some distinct features that tell us that we're looking at deep water deposits here. Cause you may say, well, this just looks like beach sand. And it does. It definitely has a bit of beach sand look to it, but we look for certain things going on in here. Uh, there's certain geometries we look for and a nice geometry that we can see here is we can see there's one set of beds coming over here truncating or eroding into another bed right here now this all looks like sand so it gives us a hint that okay this is a, a not a big gravelly system like we see maybe in a river system but we have some kind of channelization or something going on that's eroding one bed from another we start looking at that and go okay we can get that in in a stream system we can maybe even get that in some beach systems if things rotate a little bit there's also some interesting other things. There's what we call rip up class here at the bottom. Those are those big boulders. One of the classic features we'll see in these deep water systems is actually what we call dewatering. And you can see how these, these look contorted and wavy here. And as I'm walking down here, it's a heck of a view down towards the ocean. Can't, can't complain about this on a day filming. It's absolutely beautiful here. Okay, I'm gonna work my way continuing down through these deposits. And I'm gonna take a step back so we can talk about what the names of the geologic formations we're looking at are here and how they're actually pretty important for understanding the geology and history of California, but they're also very important because it turns out one of these formations is critical to the early success of Southern California. So let's go take a look. Check this out. This overpass or bridge was built in 1941 to access the beach here. All right, I've moved down to the beach, which you can probably hear roaring behind me, seagulls over here. Again, spectacular view, but I want, what I wanna show you is actually in the other direction. And what I wanna show you is this cliff face. And what I want you to key in on is the color of this cliff face, kind of this grayish color. It's a slope former with a couple resistive units is what we call them, including these little white streaks in here coming through this section. Now, this is known as the Monterey Formation, and the Monterey Formation was key to some of the early success and really population of Southern California. Much like Northern California had the gold rush back in the 1840s, in the early 1900s here in Southern California, there was actually an oil and gas rush that took place in the greater LA Basin and Orange County areas what they found was oil and that oil actually originally came out of what is known here as the monterey formation and this monterey formation is what we call organic rich so it can create hydrocarbons and so that actually spurred on one of kind of the big three things that really made southern california southern california the other two things i would i would argue would be of course the citrus industry here which was huge especially in areas in the inland empire riverside san bernardino redlands those areas really took off from a citrus point of view in the early 1900s. And of course, the other thing that was happening here in the early 1900s was the start of Hollywood, which of course brought in a lot of people and a lot of industry. So they have found a lot of marine fossils within this section and or some marine fossils within this section. And they've been able to tie this to a deep water environment which means its equivalent would have been way, way out there. Now, remember the ocean at that time would have been a little bit higher. And remember that this was all dropped down due to faulting and then later exhumed. So we had a couple things going on here, right? We had faults creating a basin and dropping this down below sea level at that time. We had the sea that was actually higher up in elevation than it is today. And then we had the receding of the sea of sea level probably due to glaciation and then these features being popped back up by the more present day san andreas fault go from this side which i told you was the monterey formation it's kind of gray it's got a couple of these little stripes coming across and we look laterally to it so we come across here you'll suddenly see all the gray units disappearing along a boundary that you can see it's kind of whitish through here coming up and around and this is actually what's known as the capistrano formation which is cutting down into it so these were those deposits i was telling you were these what they call turbidite deposits or think about channels deep in the ocean that come down that are gravity flows that's actually scouring out or cutting out just like a river would cut out 
parts of the land. This is actually cutting out a huge chunk of what is known as the Monterey Formation. Also giving us a hint that this was most likely in a deep water environment because of the nature of how this is cutting through here. Really neat geology here. So the state park is really made up of these two formations. So down towards the south, towards San Diego, going down the coast in that direction to the south, we have the Monterey Formation, which is this marine mudstone and also a source rock for much of the oil and gas within the LA Basin. Here, it's obviously not a source rock, it's been exposed. However, I will say I have heard stories that there are seeps or oil seeps along here where some of this is producing oil uh, along the beach in this general area. And the other formation we have here is actually known as the Capistrano Formation, which is a bunch of the sandstone scouring down out into what would have been the deep water of that time. So what I wanted to do is bring my trusty clipboard here and so you all can see what I was seeing there and that is the Monterey Formation, which is the older formation, let's say around 10 million years old, is being cut and scoured by channels or deep water turbidity currents or flows out in the deep ocean by what's known as the Capistrano Formation, which is much younger. Pretty interesting geology here in a place where you can start seeing these relationships between different types of geologic styles, if you will, deep water, muddier stuff that ends up being a source rock for all the oil here in Southern California. And then the Capistrano Formation, which is a channel deposit saying we're bringing a bunch of material out from the shoreline out into the deep water. If I turn it around here, on the right hand side is the Monterey Formation, the darker gray stuff over that direction. And then you can see the lighter Capistrano to the left. So I'm trying to line this up as best I can in this video, but somewhere there is that boundary as we come down through here. So you can see that as well. Really neat to see this out in the field. You don't always get to see these observations or make these observations as a geologist. Great spot here at San Clemente State Park. All right, so I had to do a little bit of digging. I want to make sure I had the ages correct for you. So the Monterey Formation here, they have it, you know, let's say roughly around 10 million years old. It kind of fluctuates. And the Capistrano here is somewhere around 5 million years old. So that means there's about a 5 million year difference between, at least a 5 million year difference between the deposition of the Monterey Formation and the Capistrano Formation here. So taking a quick break from the geology, just to look at the stunning scenery uh, that's a San Clemente Pier down there. Really good seafood place at the end if anybody ever makes it here. Great town to come visit here along the coast, but you can see it's just absolutely stunning. Beautiful scenery. Little bit of a drizzle today, not too bad though. Saw a pod of dolphins earlier. Saw some sea lions playing out there. All right, back to the rocks. Here's a view looking up the path we just walked down and you can see how it cuts up and as it's cutting up as I mentioned before the layers are going from oldest at the bottom to youngest at the top so as we came down we were cutting down in time for the geology and once I go back up the other way I'll be going in the exact reverse and who doesn't like walking through tunnels one of the reasons we can see the rock layer so well is because of erosion here and you can see where water comes down through here. Of course, a lot of these cliffs here are actually pretty what we call friable, which I mentioned before. But what that means is I can come up here and I can kind of rub this stuff off. Now, it's somewhat what we call lithified. It's still forming a cliff, so it means there's some cementation, but it's not hard to erode it off. So from this amazing vantage point, I want to thank you all for joining me today to learn about the Capistrano Formation, the Monterey Formation, as well as San Clemente State Park. Pretty phenomenal, really neat to see what were once deep water deposits that were out in a basin or would have been a basin at this point, you know, millions of years ago are now exhumed here and we can actually study them and learn about what's happening offshore even today using these as analogs. Pretty exciting stuff, especially as a geoscientist.
If you enjoyed this episode, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel if you're interested in human history, earth history, and where those two things intersect. I travel all over the US and even different portions of the world, and I love sharing my adventures with you. I love learning right along with all of you. So with that being said, thank you all for joining me. Take care, and we'll see you all in the next adventure. Bye for now. I've said it once, I've said it again, I'll say it probably a million times. <laughs> earth is so cool, and it's so cool to study the earth and think about all of these processes.